Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Kangwar and today we'll be studying functions lecture six and we'll be talking about two important functions, GIF and fraction part function. So let's first talk about greatest integer function and let's talk about the basic definition of it. Now, given that we are giving any kind of real input to this function, it would return an integer which is greatest among all the integers which are lesser than the input. I'm repeating it once again, it would return an integer which is greatest among all the integers which are less than the input. For example, let's say x equals to 3.5. Now, what are the integers lesser than 3.5? Those are 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 and so on till minus infinity, right? These all integers are lesser than x equals to 3.5. Now it would return 3, which is greatest among all these integers which are less than 3.5. So this is how it works. Now let's say if we want to take x equals to minus 3.5. In that case, all the integers lesser than this one are minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7 until minus infinity. So minus 4 would be the answer, not minus 3 because minus 3 is bigger than minus 3.5. So it would return minus 4 uh, for this input value, right? Now what if we give any kind of integral value to this function? If we give any kind of integral value to this function, it would return that integer only. So if x equals to 3, it would return 3 only. If x equals to minus 3, it would return minus 3 only. Okay. So for integers, it's not going to change its value, but for other values, for other real values, which are not integers, it would return the greatest integer among all integers, which are less than the input value, right? Now this was about the basic definition. Now, if you want to look at this table, we have X values over here and GF value over here. So from closed minus two to minus one open, we have minus two value. Why? Because at exact minus one, it would become minus one because at minus one, it would take the same integral value that is minus one only, right? So that's why we have to keep an open bracket over here, but we can keep a close bracket of minus two over here because at minus two, it would return minus two only, right? So for this particular range from minus two close to minus one open, it would return minus two. Similarly for, uh, for close minus one to open zero, it would return minus one, right? So if you want to plot this one, we have 0 to 1, 0 close and 1 open. So that's why we have an open circle over here and values are 0. And from 1 to 2, basically closed 1 to open 2, we have values as 1. Again, an open circle at 2 because at exact 2, value would directly jump to 2. Less than 2, it would keep on continuing with 1 as long as it is greater than equals to 1. But as soon as it is hitting 2, it would jump up towards here. That's why we have an open circle right there, right? And now let's talk about certain properties of GI function. Okay. Let's first talk about domain. Domain is R because it can take any values, integral values, uh, fractional values, rational values, irrational values. So that's why domain is R, right? And ranges integers, all integers because it's going to return integers only, right? So that's why range, ranges all integer integral values. Now, if we talk about properties of this function, let's first talk about this property and I'll take three cases for this one. So x equals to, let's say 3.5, x equals to 3.99 and x equals to 3. These are three cases to justify this property. And let's first talk about first part of this property that is x greater than equals to GIF x. Okay. Now if you put 3.5 over here, that comes out to be 3.5 and this comes out to be 3. So yes, satisfied, right? Now if you put 3.99 over here, this comes out to be 3.99. This comes out to be 3. Again satisfied. If you put 3 over here, this is 3 and this also 3. So equality holds over here. So that's why we have equality over here. Less than or equal, right? This one. So for these two cases, this inequality was holding true. And for this cases, this equality is holding true. So we have taken all cases. We have taken integral values or we have taken other kinds of values, right? So the first part of first property is justified. Now let's talk about the second part. Second part is X is less than GIFX plus one. Okay. Now again, let's take three examples. X equals to 3.5, X equals to 3.99, X equals to three. Okay. Why I'm taking this one? Because that is very close to an integral value. That's why I'm taking this one. Okay. So when X equals to 3.5, this is 3.5. 
and what is this this is for yes it's less than it's not equals to it's not even close to equal it's less than equal to less than okay now for this one we have 3.99 over here and we have 3 plus 1 that is 4 again it's again less than this one when we have 3 over here we have 3 over here this becomes 3 plus 1 that is 4 again it's less than so in all three cases it is coming to be less than there is no case of equality over here only inequality so that's why we have equality over here but we don't have equality over here right so we have justified the first property now let's talk about this property it says gifx is less than equals to x and greater than x minus 1 okay again let's talk about this part first for example x equals to 3.5 x equals to 3.99 x equals to 3 okay for 3.5 this is 3 and this becomes 2.5 correct for 3.99 this becomes 3 this becomes 2.99 again correct for 3 this is 3 and this is 2 again correct so this part is true okay now if we talk about this part over here we have x equals to 3.5 so this becomes 3 and this becomes 3.5 so it's less than over here we have 3.99 so this becomes 3 this becomes 3.99 again less than but we have, when we have 3 over here this becomes equal to 3 right so that's why we have equality over here right it's similar kind of property like the last one but over there we had x in between over here we have gfx in between okay so in both the cases we have equality on one side and inequality on the other side okay similarly you can prove this one as well you can take all these three examples and justify it for yourself right but you have to remember these three properties and now if we talk about this property that is gifx plus m equals to gifx plus m now let's take one example let's say x equals to 1.5 m equals to some integral value that is 5 let's say okay so we have got 1.5 plus 5 so this becomes 6.5 so answer would be 6 gif of 6.5 would be 6 right and for this one it becomes 1.5 plus 5 now gif of 1.5 is 1 1 plus 5 equals to 6 so we can verify that this property holds true for every case let's say x is an integer right let's take x as an integer x equals to 1 and m equals to let's say 5 in that case this becomes 6 and gif of 6 is 6 only for this one it becomes 1 plus 5 now gif of 1 is 1 only so 1 plus 5 6 so for both integral and non integral values this is holding to be true right So again, you have to remember this property as well. Now, for this one, g i f x plus g i f of minus x equals to. We have two conditions once again, either integer or non-integer. For integer values, it becomes zero. For non-integer values, it, it would become minus one. Why? Let's take an example. Let's say x equals to one point five, or let's say x equals to one. We have taken both cases. For x equals to one, this becomes one, and this becomes minus one. So that's why zero. Okay. For x equals to 1.5, this becomes 1, and this one becomes minus 2. So that's why if we add both of them, it would become minus 1, right? So for non-integral values, this would take minus 1 value. For all integral values, it would take 0 as the value, right? So these three are the main properties of GIF function. Now let's solve this question. If y equals to 2 times GIF x plus 3. Now also y equals to three times g i f x minus two plus five. We have to find out the value of g i f of x plus y. Now in this second one, we can use the property of pulling out this integer out of g i f, right? This particular property. Okay. So we can write this as three times g i f x minus two. Basically, I pulled out this two minus two from the g i f function plus five. Now this becomes three times g i f x. And we have three, two, minus six, and plus five. That is minus five. Okay. Now, why is this, and why is this also? So we can equate them. So two times g i f x plus three equals to three times g i f x minus one. So this would give me g i f x equals to four. Okay. Now, when g i f equals to four, that means x is less than equals to four, greater than five. Right. This is what we mean. 
now we can use this value to find out the y value y equals to 2 times 4 plus 3 that is 11 now based on the range of x and value of y we can say that x plus y is less than equals to 15 and greater than 16 right and if we want to find out the gif of x plus y we can say that that would be 15 only okay so 15 is the correct answer for this one now let's solve this question find the value of this expression where this denotes the gif function okay so we have gif of 1 by 2 plus gif 1 by 2 plus 1 by 1000 which is still zero right this is still zero this is zero because we're adding something very small until we are reaching 500 by 1000 that is 1 by 2 over here in that case this would become one and we can you know add further so let's see how it goes so we have 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 1000 over here okay now this is zero this is zero it would stay zero until we reach 1 by 2 plus 499 by 1000 now if we had 500 by 1000 over here this would have become 1 by 2 and this is 1 by 2 so this would become 1 so we have as long as we have something lesser than 1 by 2 over here this is still 0 right plus now we can start with 1 by 2 plus 500 by 1000 now this is 1 because this is 1 by 2 this is 1 by 2 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1 and gif of 1 is 1 only right 1 by 2 plus 500 1 by 1000 and until 1 by 2 plus 1499 by 1000 why because if we take 1500 over here this would become 1.5 this is 0.5 so this would become 2 so gif of exact 2 is 2 only right but we want this series to be 1 only this is 1 this is 1 and this is also 1 now it would start from 1 by 2 plus 1500 divided by 1000 now this is 2 we'll again take all the two values 1 by 2 plus 1501 divided by 1000 until 1 by 2 plus 2499 by 1000 right now this is still 2 and we are going till 2946 okay so 1 by 2 plus this is 2500 divided by 1000 until 1 by 2 plus 242946 divided by 1000 okay now this entire series this first series is 0 right now this second series is 1 into 1000 Right, because we have thousand numbers, we are going from five hundred to one four nine nine. Those are thousand numbers, so that's why this is one to thousand. All these GIF values are one only. Third, this third series is two into thousand, right? And this fourth series is three into how many numbers over here? We have two five zero zero over here. We have two nine four six. So that would give us four nine seven. Sorry, four four seven. Okay, so we have 3 into 447 over here, we have 2 into 1000 over here, we have 1 into 1000 over here, and we have 0 over here. So if we add all these values, you'll get the answer. Okay. Now let us talk about the fractional part function, and it is nothing but the remainder part of the input value which is left once we have subtracted the GI value. I'll repeat that once again. It is the remainder part of the input value which is left once we have subtracted the gif value from the input value right so this is how it's being defined x minus gif x right now if x equals to 3.5 in that case gif would be 3 so fractional part would be 0.5 now if x equals to minus 3.5 a lot of people would write fractional part as minus 0.5 by being a little casual over here but that's not true it's not minus 0.5 so if you see gif over here would be minus 4 right so fractional part would be still 0.5 so one thing we can understand over here regardless if the input value is positive or negative fractional part is always going to be positive we can have negative gi values but we cannot have negative fraction values that is the first thing to understand over here now let's take few examples for example x equals to 3.5, x equals to 3.99, x equals to 3, right? We'll be taking these three stand examples over here as well, right? Now, fractional part for the first case, that would be 0.5. 
For the second case, it would be 0.99. For the third case, it would be zero, right? So as soon as we are reaching integer, fraction part is zero only, right? Because GIF of this function is three only. So that's why there is no remainder over here. So it becomes zero. So we can see that it's not going to approach one. It's not going to touch one. It's approaching one. It's not going to touch one, right? So that's why we can say that fraction part is less than one and greater than equals to zero. It can be zero when we have integral value over here, but it can never touch one, right? So we have what we have learned over here. Fractional part is always going to be positive regardless if the input is positive or negative. Fractional part is a remainder part. What, what is left behind once we have subtracted GIF and fractional part range is less than one and greater than equals to zero. Okay. Now let's talk about this table and graph simultaneously. Let's look at this one first, where we can see that this range of X is same as this range of fraction part. So in that case, a fraction part would open up as X only, right? Because we have this range. So in that range, it's going to have the same value. So from zero to one, it's going to have this kind of line that is Y equals to X. This is Y equals to X. So it's going to behave as Y equals to X from zero to one open, closed at zero, open at one, right? But uh, we know that this fractional part is going to take only these values, right? Regardless of what value we are going to take for X, fraction part X is going to take these values only. So we can see that this graph is likely to repeat over the ranges. So if we move from one to two, from closed one to open two, it's going to repeat it once again. From closed two to open three, it's going to repeat it once again. Why? Because it's going to take only these values. It's not going to change its values, right? So we are going to have these kind of repetitions over here. So now when we have this range, the function value would become X minus one. Basically when we have X equals to one, this is zero fraction part is zero over here, right? And it has to behave in the same manner. So it's going to move like this. So this graph would be X minus one. So this graph would be Y equals to X. This graph would be Y equals to X minus one. And similarly, this graph would be Y equals to X minus two. This graph would be Y equals to X plus one and so on and so forth, right? So this same graph is going to repeat over and over again, but because we have different critical points over here, that's why these values change. These constant values change over here, but the idea behind all these values is same. Okay. And now let's talk about certain points about fraction part function. And the first thing is to understand over here is domain. And just like our GI function, its domain is also R because it can, it can take any input value over here. It can take integral values. It can take fractional, rational, irrational values. So that's why domain is R and range is zero to one. We have seen that over here. We can see that fraction part X is less than one and greater than equals to zero. So we can see that ranges over here, right? Now, if we talk about properties of fraction part function, this first point is same as range only. So ignore that point. Let's talk about this one. So we have fractional part of GIF X equals to GIF of fractional X equals to zero. How? So GIF is always going to take an integer value, right? And fractional part of integral value is zero. So that's why this is zero. And if you talk about this one, we know that fractional part X is less than one and greater than equals to zero. So if we take GIF of that, that would come out to be zero. So both of them comes out to be zero, right? Now if you talk about the third one, says that fractional of fractional X equals to fractional X only, right? It's kind of obvious. This fractional part is going to take value in this range only less than one and bigger than equals to zero. And if you take fractional value of that, so that again stays the same, right? So it's not going to change value. So that's why this property is kind of very obvious. Or if you talk about the fourth property, we have fractional X plus M equals to fractional X. Now let's take an example. Let's say we have X equals to 1.5 and M equals to, let's say five. Okay. So this comes out to be 1.5 plus five, and this is 6.5. We can see that we have integral value as six and a fraction value as 0.5. So it comes out to be 0.5 over here. This is 1.5. Now, if we take fraction value of this one, that again comes out to be 0.5, right? So if we have an integral value over here, we can just remove that. And for this part only, we can find out the fraction value that would be the same as this value. Okay. So this is our fourth property.
and for this last property you can drive it by yourself just like we did in gi function basically we are, we took two cases over there integral values and non integral values so you can take two conditions over there and you can find out the values and justify it now let's solve this question solve the equation modulus of 2x minus 1 equals to 3 times gifx plus 2 times fractional where this denotes the greatest integer function okay and this denotes the fractional part function so we have modulus of 2x minus 1 equals to 3 times gif plus 2 times fractional okay now we know that x equals to gif plus fractional right we know that so we are going to convert this into this kind of format so we can write this as gifx plus 2 times gif basically 3 times gifs gifx plus 2 times gifx plus 2 times fraction but why i did that because we have 2x over here so i want to generate 2x here as well right this becomes gifx plus 2x right now based on our critical point theory in modulus we can open up this modulus into two parts when we have x is uh, greater than equals to 7 by 2 or x is less than 1 by 2 Now in this case it would open up as positive two x minus one, and in this case it would open up as negative minus of two x minus one, right? This we have seen in the previous lectures of uh, functions. Okay. Now for case one, this is going to open up as positive. This becomes g i f x plus two x. Now two x gets cancelled out. You're getting g i f x equals to minus one. Now this can happen when x is less than zero, right? This can only happen when x is less than zero. But what are what is the basic condition over there? Basic condition is x should be bigger than equals to zero, one by two, right? Yes. At one point we are saying that this is going to open up as positive when x is bigger than one by two. But over here we are saying that x is less than zero, so that is not going to be true, right? So we are not getting any values from here. And now if we talk about the second case, that is x is less than one by two, uh, modulus is going to open up as negative, so that would be one minus two x equals to g i f x plus two x, right? So this would give me g i f x equals to one minus four x, right? Now if we apply zero, x equals to zero over here, this would become zero, and this would be positive. That is one. So x equals to zero is not the answer, right? Now if we apply x equals to less than zero over here, this is going to give us negative values only, right? For x less than zero, this is always going to give us negative values. But for x less than zero, this is always going to give us positive values because we have a negative sign over here. If x is less than zero, let's say minus one, this would become plus four, and this is one. So it's always going to give us positive values. So again, x is less than zero, also not a valid entry over here, right? And now that we have rejected x equals to zero and x less than zero, what we are left with? X belongs to zero to one by two, both open brackets, right? This is the range what we are left with, right? And for this particular range, g i f x is always going to be zero. So one minus four x equals to zero. So x equals to one by four. Is one by four coming in this range? Yes. So one by four is the correct answer. So we had to open up the modulus into two parts, and we have to back check always these basic conditions under which we have opened up the modulus. Otherwise, we won't be getting the answer, correct answer. Okay. So today's lecture was till here only, and we have covered so many examples for both GIF and fractional part, and one miscellaneous example like this one where we have modulus, fractional, and GIF function all together in one question. So I don't think PGTP is going to go beyond this kind of difficulty level in 24, right? So you are going to see application of GIF and fractional part both in limits, continuity, differentiability, and you will get a lot of practice over there. So let's meet in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.